For the past 50 years or so, we've got cargo travel pretty sorted. If an item needs to travel long distance around the world and time isn't an object, especially if the object you're transporting is large, then we rely on container ships, rail, and for that last bit of the journey, trucks. And if an item needs to get from point A to point B in as short a time as possible, we use airplanes switching to trucks for the final part of the journey. But just as Virgin Hyperloop One wants to change the way we feel about passenger travel, so too does the company born out of Elon Musk's Hyperloop Alpha want to change the way we ship things around the world. And now it has its first cargo transportation partner, DP World, which has just announced its intent to utilize Hyperloop technology by partnering with Virgin Hyperloop One. DP World, if you don't know, is a massive freight logistics and services company which was formed in 2005 when Dubai Ports Authority and Dubai Ports International merged. While it currently doesn't operate any ports in the US, there is a whole political backstory there which explains the reason why. DP World does operate both container and non-container terminals around the rest of the world across every single continent, and its current net revenue is somewhere north of 4.7 billion US dollars. In other words, it's a big, big company that has a lot of clout in the shipping world. But if shipping is currently doing just fine, and Hyperloop is still very much in its prototype phase, why is DP World committing to such a big collaboration with Virgin Hyperloop One? Simply put, it's about the kind of returns that Hyperloop technology could offer the shipping world, if it becomes a commercial reality, that is. And that is worth a big gamble. According to DP World, Hyperloop technology could allow it to deliver goods that would take more than four days to ship by road and 23 hours by air in just 16 hours or less. And unlike air travel, which is eight times more expensive than using road transportation, it predicts that Hyperloop freight shipping would only be marginally more expensive than using a truck. And that makes Hyperloop freight the cheapest transportation method by far for rapid delivery. And of course, it's far better for the environment too, since its emissions can be effectively zero if the system is powered by renewable electricity. There are other benefits beyond speed, cost, and environmental concerns to using a Hyperloop system for freight travel too. Unlike road, air, or sea, Hyperloop systems are completely enclosed and protected from the elements. As long as the Hyperloop tubes themselves are structurally sound and the system has power, Hyperloop pods can operate regardless of the outside temperature or weather. It essentially offers all of the benefits of rail haulage without any of the downsides at the speed of an airplane and the cost of a truck. Finally, there's the whole pirate problem. Freight by sea, at least in some parts of the world, can still be the victim of pirates. While there are some additional challenges in building Hyperloop systems across oceans, it would be extremely difficult, although not completely impossible, for pirates to intercept goods in transit the same way they can commandeer entire freight ships. It's not just pirates on the high seas either. In some parts of the world, freight traveling by road or rail is also at severe risk of being hijacked, particularly in parts of Africa, Asia, and South America. Again, while Hyperloop tubes or tunnels aren't impervious to attacks, it's more likely that they'll be victims of cyber attacks or terrorism than old-fashioned men with guns threatening to take your life unless you hand over all the goods. And this means that though Virgin Hyperloop One is still in its early days of operation, DP World's involvement is a smart one, as it ensures the freight company gets on the ground floor should Hyperloop technology really take off. Yet, while Virgin Hyperloop One has the potential to change the way we ship things around the world, it also has the potential to be dramatically disruptive when it comes to employment. You see, part of the Virgin Hyperloop One vision shared by DP World is to automate as much of the delivery process as possible, using automated capsules and drones to deliver goods the final mile of their journey from a Hyperloop terminal to the customer. And that could have a very large, very negative impact on hundreds of thousands of workers around the world who currently make their money through the freight haulage business, be it transporting the goods themselves by loading and unloading them, or by working in associated industries. Like so many other technological revolutions, however, the displacement of trained individuals can be eased by giving them new training to help them perform new jobs in the Hyperloop age. 
sure, less people will likely be needed to load and operate Hyperloop than other systems. But if Hyperloop is to extend at the rate that Virgin Hyperloop 1 wants it to, there's going to be an awful lot of construction, inspection and support jobs needed to ensure that it all runs smoothly. The question is just now, how many displaced employees will be able to snap up new jobs in the age of Hyperloop? That's it. As always, hit the notification bell to hear the moment a new show is uploaded. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to both this channel and our new channel, Transport Evolved Take Two. And of course, if you'd like to help us keep this channel running, then you can make a donation by following one of the two links posted below. That's it. Thanks for watching. Until next time, keep evolving. Keep evolving.